Today we're looking at how to create Dr. Robotnik as seen in the Sonic movie, ladies and gentlemen. So, starting off with a source object here in Scribblenauts Unlimited of a science teacher. Trust me, the source object is not always like meant to be exactly what your object is uh, gonna end up as. So if it does, that's fine. Now, science teacher, it's not like that's super far off. I mean, this is Dr. Robotnik we're talking about. The professor, the, the guy who has like 300 IQ, all that stuff. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, we took off the head, the arms, the legs, and we got Flux. That's one of Maxwell's brothers. He's got a ton of them in this game, you guys. I will take the front arm as well as the back arm of Flux and use those both for the arms of Jim Carrey, Dr. Robotnik. So that's who we're creating if it's not clear. I guess it is, but <laughs> just in case I need to say it, you never know. But anyway, we got Scratch coming up next. That's yet another Maxwell brother. The good thing about these is if you're trying to create like a real human, Scribble Nuts Unlimited with their people that are not Maxwell brothers, the humans in humanoids in this game, they often don't look particularly realistic. You know, they're kind of that style that's like short-legged, short arms, kind of big heads sometimes. Chibi! We had a sunbather back arm that's like there's a collar kind of coming up with the black trench coat that he's wearing. And uh, Tooth Fairy back arm right here, the female Tooth Fairy, if that's not obvious, is actually going to be for his neck. When we put the head on, we are going to create those objects separately because there's a stamp space limitation in this game. We'll get to that in a little bit. But we have it at a slight incline when we place that Tooth Fairy arm down there for the neck. It's gonna kind of all come together to be the head and neck attached. You'll see it pretty soon. So this is the properties editor. It's where you can edit health and other things that are kind of usually behind the scenes about your character, but some of them can be seen. And I like to read background information and fun facts when we get to this part of the video, so I want to go ahead and do that for Dr. Robotnik. I love that as I was checking some of the research, not that it's particularly needed in this case, but it described Dr. Robotnik as eccentric. And with Jim Carrey, I'll add even more so, which is great. And he is. He's the eccentric antagonist of the Sonic movie, and we've just finished creating the body object for his early first appearances in the film. He wears that black coat and black on black on black on black, murdered out, and he even can be seen wearing some little black sunglasses at some points, but we didn't include that here because it's actually not really all that often. Now, you've seen the thumbnail, I guess, for this video, but we will be creating another version of Eggman, which is a minor spoiler, I guess, although this is, once again, one of those things shown off in certain trailers or TV spots but also press releases online when you'd search Dr. Robotnik's Sonic movie because it often comes up with the crazed Eggman look. And again, the minor spoiler is that this comes into play later, near the end of the movie. We'll talk about that later on in this episode. But like my parents always said, you can't have a head without a body. They never said that. We started off with a head as the source object for Dr. Robotnik's head right here. Now this one, not gonna look like crazy Dr. Robotnik, but we've already established that. We got a smile going down there. That's actually kind of one of those times where it's gonna be obvious. The nose and the smile for this object are going to be literally what we type. That's not usually the case in Scribblenauts. Like, you don't want to just say, okay, this character wears, like, an apron or something, and just and then just type in apron. You know, there are often much better things that you can use. Like, for instance, we're using the fins right there of a bass. We did that four times, two of them to make his mustache, and then another set of two to make the whites of his eyes. So, you know, it's like, that's the sort of thinking that you want if you're new to Scribblenauts Unlimited. That's a good way to kind of just uh, think outside of the box to make your creations. So another kind of multi-use was going to be Dory, the fish Dory. Uh, there's a bottom fin of it that we made for his eyebrows. We're actually going to use that a little bit later, but we used P four times, and that's of course the iris, the color in his eyes, as well as the pupil in the eye, so it was uh, again multi-use. We did that four times. Pimple was painted white for some shine in the eyes, and there's that Dory fin again, and we're going to use Doe to be his ear, and so this is sort of interesting to me because we've done a lot of different stamps for ear. I mean, you can just type in ear, but it's going to have all this curvature that I feel like doesn't look more on the realistic side, at least. I've used Chicken Nugget before, you know, it just depends on what the character's ears look like. So I thought Doe with that octopus piece right there is a decent representation for his ears. And so let's go ahead and name this Dr. Robotnik head after we put down dandruff. That's actually not to be dandruff. It's literally just to be some of where his hair is thinner right there on his head and amidst his hairline. So anyway, you want the head object when it's created separately from the body. Here in the properties editor, or fill that circle in near the bottom that says can be worn on the face like glasses. That's going to mostly put the head object where it needs to go. Now you may need to do some adjustments, but I totally have to tell you guys something. This was my son's favorite part of the movie. Consequently, one of my favorite parts to see, honestly, especially involving Jim Carrey. Those who have even seen the trailer know about this, so very much not a chance of spoiler here. But we placed down a latte and you see he reacted to it. He went and drank it. I mean, he ate it. He ate the cup. <laughs> That's what it looks like in Scribble Nuts. 
But here's my son's favorite clip. He loves the scene where Jim Carrey is basically dancing and he gets surprised because Agent Stone walks up behind him and says, I just thought you might like a latte with steamed Austrian goat milk. And so then Robotnik, Jim Carrey, turns around and only in a way that I feel like Jim Carrey is genius with it. And this is why our emotion reactions in Scribblenauts here are love and then like this kind of crazy angry face is because while he was shocked and scared that Agent Stone came up behind him, in that state he says, What do I look like, an imbecile? Of course I want a latte. I love the way you make them! And my son always laughs and eventually would try to like imitate him. You know, it kind of just came out like, Of course a latte, and I make them! Like that. Like that's basically how my son says it. You gotta see this video. But okay, it's like, you know, when we put our creation here next to Sonic, here's another thing about Scribblenauts is like sometimes when you're creating characters from the same franchise, the sizes might be off, especially if you're doing it in a different session. So what I'm trying to say is, look, here we can make Sonic small and like the size basically is going to be off. Like, I just feel like it's still off. You know, that small made him too small, I feel like. Although, I don't know. I mean, maybe that's actually kind of accurate to the movie and their size proportions, but I'm just going to make him regular size again and we'll see them in action action right here. So here's the script. When Jim Carrey Robotnik gets hit in this game, if he loses or gains health, the script was basically that he's gonna wait a set time, but he's gonna create a white robot. And man, that took Sonic down, our hero. And look, now it's the robots taking over. No, Jim Carrey, don't go down. Don't die, Jim Carrey. We need comedic actors like you. So yeah, I mean, because he was, uh, he had the adjective hostile on, so he ended up attacking the robots, and they protected themselves, of course. Uh, what a foolish thing I've done. So alright, let's start off with a revolutionary as our next source object. This will be kind of speed create style to show you how to create Eggman. Now we are doing the crazed Eggman from the spoiler alert planet. That's going to be revealed later on, so if you seriously don't want that. I mean, I feel like this is such a small spoiler. Anyway, we had Patches, that's one of Maxwell's brothers, that's for the arm. Uh, and you can actually do LARP, it's a different Maxwell brother, but the proportions are very similar. And the thing about LARP is that he doesn't have a glove on, and that's what we wanted. So so Robotnik in the movie, his clothes are all tattered and everything like that and so we kind of want to give this a look that like all of his clothes are dirty and that's why he's got one glove on but the other one he has at least a part of it going over his wrist. So that was the good use of having different Maxwell brothers. We use duct tape, a cuttlefish, the arm tentacle piece that's mostly straight, minus sign going in down there, octopus tentacle piece, it's like there's also a really kind of straight looking one with curves at each end. And that's down there on his legs. And so we'll go ahead with just some last kind of touches on it, last little details, and we'll read the background information and fun facts about this Dr. Robotnik, the crazed version as I call it. Uh, so I've already given enough spoiler warnings here, but we'll just mention a bit more about this crazed Dr. Robotnik look, not for too long. This is essentially his red flight suit attire with the black goggles that have red lenses. We'll get to that in a second when we make the head, but those who have seen the movie know the spoiler that makes him become very similar to the Eggman that we know and love. He spent Spend some time going nuts on the mushroom planet and has even seen shaving his head completely. His mustache is all grown out and crazy as we see in those pictures of him. Or are I guess about to see. And the suit is dirtied up and torn in a few spots. We're gonna make him shoot out a mushroom literally just because of the mushroom planet thing. <laughs> it doesn't really have to do with his real powers. So the home stretch of creations here is gonna be the head object which we've got right there with another golden egg placed over those. And again we'll do this kind of speed create style but essentially that's that's the back tail pieces of a worm to start off those goggles. And we had circle there, uh, paint it with just some kind of metallic color for the border of the lenses. You know, it's gonna go around that. And then we can put a germ over one of the lenses because it's cracked. So you can often, you can even see this, you know, on like Google images or something. You can see that his lens is cracked like that. Now gravy, this was actually a stamp we used on the black outfit for the bottom of the shoes. We can use that same gravy actually to go in between where the bridge of his nose is. So it's in between the goggles, I should say, and uh, comb over after the nose goes down. So comb over, we can do twice. Actually, we're going to do it four times, I would say, because we can add more to that mustache in a second. Uh, cobia is a fish, C-O-B-I-A. Take the side fin kind of near its head. That can be for the mouth. Now, if we have enough stamps, we might be able to actually just use like jellyfish tentacle pieces where they're like a black line to make the teeth. Otherwise, you can do it this way with just a color pattern. And so this time we 
went with the chicken nugget for the ear just to show both options and you can put that octopus tentacle kind of curved piece like that inside the ear to give it some more detail. Dandruff once again, uh, this time we're going to actually use it for scruff. You know, he's got the scruffy facial hair down there. Stubble. And so we can actually add those comb overs now. I want to give that mustache a little bit more craziness to it. And so we called this Eggman head. The way they actually do it in the movie is uh, they, Sonic calls him Eggman because not his look actually. It's his egg shaped robots that they make note of. And so looky here. So let's see. Sonic uh, should go after our new Eggman and we can see how they stack up right here. And whoa, that's insane, man. Did you see that? Sonic's flipping like Yoda in Attack of the Clones 2. That's actually awesome. I feel like this is how Sonic should fight in Scribblenauts. Honestly, he should be using his speed to his advantage. You saw right there, we just we slowed it down, right? You saw the mushroom got launched forward. It's not really going to do any damage when it's a projectile like that. If you actually made it his weapon, like he literally has a weapon and he shoots mushroom, then it will do damage. It has to be a weapon projectile usually to do damage in this way when you do it via the scripting. So we just sped up the fight because that was going to take a long time. But look, Sonic the Hedgehog going to reign victorious over the crazy Eggman. But there's both of our designs if you want to see them. Possibly a small height difference, although that actually could work because I feel like when he's crazed and crazy, he might like hunch over a little bit, hold his neck forward some. So there's really one more character to create from the Sonic movie and people have been asking for it. It's just that you guys asked for Eggman more and I only have limited time in my life to create things. So we did these four objects, meaning two heads, two bodies. We'll create that last one next, but just please know it's a, it's a total spoiler and so I'm gonna have to put spoiler alerts everywhere, but I'm spoiler alerting you now. But I mean, hey, you've had a lot of time. Like the movie's now been out for a while and this spoiler is already all over YouTube and elsewhere. <laughs> We're gonna do it. Now I'm also gonna be streaming Animal Crossing. So that's obviously coming up the next weekend. I'll actually be playing it on the 19th. I get to tackle it one day early, which is gonna be fun. So I hope that you guys will join me over there as well as on the episode next Sunday. So I'll catch you on that vid. And thanks for viewing. Oh, bitch, I'm a